from Milpitas, California, at the edge of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering autonomous vehicles. Brought to you by Western Digital. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are at the Auto Tech Council Autonomous Vehicles event here at Western Digital. It's part of our ongoing uh, work that we're doing with Western Digital um, about data makes possible and, and all the really innovative and interesting things that are going on that at the end of the day, there's some data that's driving it all and this is a really crazy and interesting space. So we're excited for our next guest. He's Mark DeSantis. He's the CEO of Roadbotics. Mark, great to see you. Welcome, uh, thanks. Thanks for having me, Jeff. So the, just to give the quick overview of what is Roadbotics all about. Sure. We use a simple cell phone as a data collection device. You put that in the windshield, you drive, it records all the video, and all that video gets uploaded to the cloud, and we assess the road surface meter by meter. Our customers would be public works departments at the little town to a big city or even a state, and we apply the same principles that a pavement engineer would apply when they look at a piece of pavement, looking for all the different subtle little features so that they can get a, first of all, get an assessment of the road, and then they can do capital planning and fix those roads and do a lot of things that they can't do right now. So I think the, the, the economics of roads, the condition of roads, roads in general, right? We don't think about them much until they're, they're closed, they're being right. fixed, they're broken up, there's a pothole. Yeah. But it's really a complex system and a really high value system that needs ongoing maintenance. That's right. I always use the example of the Romans who built a 50,000 mile road network across Europe, the Middle East, and uh, Africa. Some of those roads like the Appian Way are still used today. They were very good road builders and they understand the importance of roads. Regrettably, we take our roads for granted. The American Society for Civil Engineers annually rates infrastructure, and we're rated about 28% of our nation's 11 million lane miles as poor. Unfortunately, that's 28%? Just 28%, and that really means that you need to invest, we'll need to invest at least a million to two million bucks a mile to get those roads back into shape. So we take our roads for granted. I'm enjoying this conference, and there's one point that I want to make that I think is very poignant is the AV revolution will also require a revolution in the maintenance and build and, and sustain sustenance of our road network, not just in the United States, but everywhere in the world. So it's interesting in doing some research before before we got together in terms of you know the active maintenance that's, that's not only required to keep a road in good yeah. shape, but if you keep the active maintenance in, in position, those roads will last a very long time. And yeah. you made an interesting comment that now the autonomous vehicles, it's actually more important for those vehicles, not only for jolting the electronics around that they're right. carrying, right. but also for everything to work the way it's supposed to work according to the algorithms. Andrew Eng, who's an eminent computer scientist, machine learning, we were spun out of Carnegie yeah. Mellon, he was a graduate of that program, recognized early on that the quality of the roads made all the difference in the world for these vehicles to move around. We, in turn, were spun out of Carnegie Mellon, out of that same group of, of AV researchers, and in fact, the impetus for the technology was to be able to use the sensing technology that allows a vehicle to move around to assess the quality of roads. And it's road inspection really is, a, is an important part of road maintenance, the ability to go look at an asset. Interestingly, it's an asset whose challenge is not the fact that it can't be inspected, it's the sheer size of the asset. When you're talking about a small town that might have a 60 mile road network, most the vast majority of inspection is visual inspection. That means somebody in a car riding very slowly looking down. Now do that for tens, thousands, hundreds of thousands of miles, very hard to do. Our system makes all that very much more efficient. The interesting thing about autonomous vehicles is they'll have the capacity to use that data to do that very assessment. So for our company, we ultimately see us embedded in the vehicle itself. But for the time being, cell phones work fine. Right, so I'm just curious, what are some of those leading indicator sure. data points? Because obviously we know the pothole, yeah. um, by then things have gone too far, but what are some of the subtle things that maybe yeah. I might see but I'm not really looking <laughs> at? Well, I think I've changed you right now, and you don't know it. You're never going to look at a road the same. I, well, I, I told hear, you, I told after you. After you hear me talk for the next three <laughs> minutes, you know, I, I don't look at roads the same, and I'm not a civil engineer, nor am I a pavement engineer, but as a CEO of this company, I had to learn a lot about those two disciplines. And in fact, when you look at a seat piece of asphalt, you're actually looking for things like alligator cracks, which sort of looks like the back of an alligator's skin, uh, block cracks, edge cracks, rutting, a whole bunch of things that, that pavement engineers, frankly, and there is a discipline called pavement engineering, where they look for. And those, those features determine the state of that road and also dictate what repairs will be done. Concrete pavement has a similar sort of set of characteristics. So what we're looking for when we look at a road is I always say that people say, well, you're the pothole company. If all you see are potholes, you don't have a business. And the right. reason is potholes are at the end of a long process of degradation. So when you see a pothole, there are two problems. One is 
You can certainly blow out a tire, break an axle in a pothole. But also it's indicative of a deeper problem, which means the surface of the road has been penetrated, which means you have to dig up that road and replace it. So if you can see features that are predictive of a road that's just about to go bad, make small fixes, you can extend the useful life of that asset indefinitely. Right. So before I let you go, unfortunately, we were short on time. I'd yeah. love to learn more about roads. I told you I skateboard, so I pay a lot of attention to smooth <laughs> yeah. roads and, and rough you'll roads. you'll pay even more now. Now I'll pay more <laughs> and call the city. Um, but I, I want to kind of pivot off what happened at Carnegie Mellon. And, you know, obviously, in, uh, academic institutions are a huge part of this revolution. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of work going on. We're yeah. close to Stanford and, right. and, uh, and Berkeley here. Talk a little bit about what happens uh, happening at Carnegie Mellon. And I yeah. think specifically you came out of the Robotics Institute yeah. and something called the Traffic 21 Project. Yeah, Traffic 21 is funded by some local uh, private interests who believe that the various technologies that are really CMU is known for around computer science, robotics, engineering, could be instrumental in bringing about this AV revolution. And as a consequence of that, they developed a program early on to try to bring these technologies together. Uber came along and literally hired 27 of those researchers. Argo now, Argo Ford's autonomous vehicle now, is big in, in, uh, in Pittsburgh as well. On any given day, by my estimate, it's not official estimate here, there are about 400 autonomous vehicles, Ford and Uber vehicles, on Pittsburgh streets every single day. It's an eerie experience being driven around by a completely autonomous Uber vehicle, believe me. I've been in a couple. It's 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 interesting. Then we we did a, a thing with a company called Phantom. They're the ones that step in if you're your, if your Uber gets oh, yeah. stuck, which is interesting. <laughs> so really interesting times and and exciting. And I will go and pay closer attention for the alligator patterns <laughs> on my route home tonight. <laughs> All right, Mark. Thanks for uh, stopping thanks again, by and sharing Jeff. the insight. Appreciate you having me. All right, he's Mark. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube from the Auto Tech Council Autonomous Vehicles event in Milpitas, California. Thanks for watching.